Welcome 2017 MacAdvin Com Conference. Uh, hopefully it's been engaging so far and hopefully after an hour you'll feel the same way. Um, bring Bash to Xcode, so hopefully you're in the right spot. Um, the reason I wanted to do this was I have gobs and gobs of Bash scripts. Uh, for the end user, they just end up scratching their head. Uh, sometimes I'm dealing also with remote techs. Um, who might be a little bit uh, more comfortable on Windows? I want to provide them with something that they're used to. Lots of tools available. Um, I could call up some uh, Apple script to get a GUI. Um, Platypus, Bashaw, Coco Dialog. Uh, but each time there was a little bit more I wanted to do. I wish I could do this. I wish I could change that. So Xcode. For me, a little bit like letting the genie out of the bottle. Everything I wanted to do, there goes my ASCII art, um, I was able to do. Uh, although with a more powerful tool, I also need to be a little bit careful. Um, sometimes I can get things... I didn't expect. Hopefully, you won't see that today. So, quick introduction. Uh, Leslie Hallou, or Leslie N. I was afraid there'd be a bunch of other Leslie's running around, so distinguish myself. Uh, I work at Jamf Software, one of the uh, professional services engineers. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to work with lots of different clients. Lots of different environments. So, what am I looking to accomplish today? Uh, I've got a bash script, I'll provide one. And I want to make an application out of it. I want to get a nice looking GUI, something that uh, folks are comfortable with, something that might be a little bit more informative than uh, here's a box, type something in. Provide some feedback as the application runs. And then finally, because I did all this work, I want to share it with others. So I want to go ahead and properly sign the application. Put it out on GitHub, put it wherever, folks can download it, and they're not going to be uh, presented with that, hey, unknown developer, what's this guy doing? So first goal, uh, I'll call this a real world example. Uh, I borrowed this from one of our other engineers, he was working on a script so that folks could rename computers. Uh, maybe I don't want my field techs, uh, the tech aides, to know the administrative account. I have a script, um, and I'll uh, make this particular for uh, Jamf. There are other MDMs, I'm sure you can launch the script. Do those in a similar fashion. But I can launch the script with admin credentials. The end user doesn't need to know them. Uh, we can look through real quick. It's going to check, make sure it runs with elevated privileges. Uh, going down a little bit further, I can see that OSA script. So there I'm calling Apple script. Bring up a dialog box. Uh, it's going to ask the user, hey, what's the new computer name? A few checks. I want to make sure they don't hit cancel, make sure they actually entered a name. Once everything's set, maybe familiar, SCUtil, scuttle, set the computer name, local host name, host name. And then particular to Jamf, recon, if you're not familiar, um, inventories the computer, uh, sends the latest configuration back to the MDM server. If you use another MDM, there's probably similar commands. You can just start uh, substituting those in get it to work in your environment. So there's our script. Uh, I mentioned this was hands-on. Uh, don't expect everybody's going to be furiously typing. So let me, I'm going to throw this out on GitHub if you want to go ahead and follow along. I would encourage you. Uh, you get the most out of it, I think. You can create your own application.
So you can save probably a little bit of typing if you just go out to the uh, GitHub Big Rat Mac Admins 2017. You should see a list of a couple files. So quick check, uh, has anybody been able to download it? Make sure it's actually out there. All right, good, good. Um, another note, once I download it, uh, it's a good idea if you actually have a code editor, uh, Sublime, BB Edit, something besides uh, text edit. Uh, you may have run into it before, but when I bring scripts into something like uh, text edit, sometimes it can inject characters I didn't expect, like smart quotes. And then the, uh, the code editor doesn't like those when it runs into them. So there it is. There's our script. I want to build an application based on that. Um, if you're curious, we can take a quick look at the script. Again, it has to run with elevated privileges, run it as root. So sudo, open up terminal. Uh, I copied the script to the desktop. You can run it out of downloads. You can run it from wherever. Simple enough. There's the, uh, the Apple script that was called. Prompts us for the, uh, the computer name. OK, cancel. If you want, you can test it out. We're going to be building an application, so we'll get a chance to run it again later. So, we've got our script. I want to bring it into Xcode. So if you have it installed, go ahead and give it a quick launch. Uh, we're creating a new project. Start out with easy stuff. Continue. Mac OS, hopefully that makes sense. I might need to scroll down a little bit, but we're looking at an Apple script application. Get that going. I'll need to provide a little bit of information for the application, obviously, what do I want to call it. So computer rename, you can call it, name this computer, call it whatever. Team, I'm going to leave blank for now. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, if you have something in there already, if you've played with Xcode, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Organization name, school, company. We'll go ahead and throw something in there. Organization identifier. So that's similar to those P lists you see in library that sort of identify where this came from. That'll generate our bundle identifier. Uh, Find a spot for, to, for it to uh, be saved. And we should be good. Get the, uh, the main window. Creates a lot of stuff for us. I want to make, uh, there's really only one, I would say, important change. Uh, I changed the application category, unless you're submitting to the App Store. Probably doesn't matter if I just leave that as uh, undefined. But the deployment info, I think that's important. By default, the uh, deployment target is whatever version of the OS that Xcode is running on. Uh, if I were to leave that, and yours might say 10.12, the only OS this application would run on is 10.12. Uh, if every Mac in your environment is on the same OS, are you hiring? I don't know that I've ever seen that. Uh, it would be nice. So I'm going to back it up. Anything 10, 10 and above, it'll run on. Uh, probably run on 10, 9, maybe 10, 8. But hopefully those machines have been retired or they're not getting renamed. So we're good there. We've got our script. Let's go ahead and dump it in. All the way over on the left, we have that column. There'll be the app delegate.apple script. 
It's going to have some pre-built code. And it's going to help me out a little bit, get things started. I want to locate the section, application will finish launching. And just below that, insert code here. It's helpful. Let's just paste in our script. Like most code editors, uh, it's going to help us out a little bit, color codes, some of the text. So it looks good there. If you've done any work with Apple Script, you know that I can call Bash scripts. Just like from Bash, where we called the Apple Script, goes both ways. Since I'm creating an Apple Script application, I need to take all that Bash and enclose it with that do shell script. And that's how I tell the Apple Script stuff, hey, here's some Bash script to do. I need to do a little bit more editing. Uh, our bash script already had some double quotes, so I need to escape those out so that they're properly read. And I also have a bunch of line returns, carriage returns, new lines. I need to escape those as well. End of each line, backslash. Um, although I want to be a little bit careful as some of the lines wrap around. Our OSA script line. Please enter the name for your, don't put a backslash at the end of that. The line wraps around. Wait until we get to the end of it. The redirect dev slash null parenthesis. Backslash there. So we'll get it in a form that Xcode can run. Don't want to spend a bunch of time typing. So let me throw that out there as well. It's there. Excellent. So again, I should just be able to paste that into our project as well. Let's go ahead and build it. Command B. It shouldn't take too long. And hopefully I will get build succeeded. If I open up the products folder, we should see our app. Any successes? Of course, it always works, right? So let's test it out. I can right click the application, show in Finder. I'll find it buried deep inside several layers inside a uh, debug folder. And of course, always test in production or on a production machine. This may be why I am a remote employee. So there we go. Uh, if I give it a run, double click. Great. Just get a blank window, which is actually good because the script is designed to bail if I'm not running it with uh, elevated privileges, running it as root. The blank window is set up by default anytime I create a new project. So I'm actually glad that I saw that. So maybe a better test, kind of like what we did earlier. Open up terminal, sudo open, path to the application. Uh, I moved mine to the desktop. Sudo open, or if you want to then drag your application into terminal so you don't have to type out that huge long of string of folders. Get to the debug and then 
computer rename. Doesn't work if you tried it. I should still get the blank screen. Uh, applications, as you may be aware, are actually folders within that dot app. I go to contents, Mac resources, there's an actual binary, the actual application itself. Does that work? No. Uh, again, we'll just get the blank screen. So, one more thought. Let's get rid of that open, sudo open, just do sudo. All the way out again to the binary. And, yes. I should get the prompt. Rename the computer. We can give it a uh, run. Should process through, doesn't tell me much. But once the recon completes, that can take maybe a minute or so. I'll get that blank screen again. That's okay, uh, I just quit that. And move along. So I've completed part of my project. I've got the app. Doesn't look too exciting. So what I'd like to do is to get it to look something like this. Add a little color. Could be a company logo, some sort of graphic. Got a little bit of information there telling the user, hey, we're running recon. I'm updating the inventory. Hang on a second. Obviously, it's asking for the name. I'm going to add a little spinner just so we have something to stare at while it's running. And maybe dress the, uh, the buttons up a little bit. So we're good. So all that code we just entered in a short time ago, I'm going to comment out. I'm still going to use it a little bit as sort of a framework as I build in the new code. What do I need to add in there? Uh, if you've used Xcode before or other text editors, uh, I can just highlight the block of code I want to comment. Command forward slash comments all those lines for me. If you're just looking to waste time, you can go one by one. But I usually have better things to do. Yes. So let's uh, park the analytical side of our brain for a moment and engage the creative side. I want to dress up the, uh, the interface, the GUI a little bit. All the way over on the right, we've got that main menu section, so let's go ahead and click that. Next column over, we want to go ahead and click on View. Brings up our blank window, or canvas, or if you'd like to refer to it. And I'd like to add a couple items. All the way over on the right, let's start by adding a label. Should be able to add that. And a text field. Go ahead and get those added in there. Also want to add a couple buttons. So if you're having trouble finding these items over on the right, all the way towards the bottom, there's a filter. I could just type in push button. It'll locate that particular item, make it a little bit easier. Easier to find, then I can just drag them in. Double-clicking an item uh, allows me to rename it, provide some text. So rather than just label, new name, enter new name, new name here, whatever you want to call it. I've got a button to rename, button to cancel. Uh, cancel, maybe I'll call that quit. Whatever seems reasonable. We'll get those added on. Now I want to enter in some new code. Again, back to that app delegate section. I entered some items on the GUI. 
need to have a little bit of code that references those items. So we put in a text field for the computer name. We'll reference that. Uh, there's really no action that happens. Uh, I just enter some text and it sits there. So we'll identify that property, comp name, computer name, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then I like to identify, that's a field. So if I ended up with a, a larger program, 500 lines, I'm down at line 430. I don't want to have to look up to the top of my uh, code and remember, well, what was that computer name thing for? Oh, it was a field. Part of the name helps me remember what it's used for. Colon missing value, so that's helped me initialize. Starting out with no computer name. We've got a couple buttons. Those actually perform some actions. So we're going to create a couple functions. Functions I'll create with on. Give the function a name. So rename. Sender. In this case, sender might be the mouse click. So a little bit of Apple script. Uh, set new name. Whatever the computer name is going to be. Two. I'll reference that computer name field. String value. A little bit of stuff that we've used before. There's our do shell script. Uh, I must have been feeling verbose. At the time, I typed out the full path to SCU till. Probably not necessary. Honestly, not sure why I did it. Uh, computer name, and then I need to insert the new name variable, whatever we're calling the, uh, the computer. And then again, dressed it up a little bit more uh, since the, the JAMP binary um, has moved locations in the past. I might want to guard against it moving again in the future. So I'm making a quick call to locate where is the binary located, and then again, we do our recon. One last function. The user decides to cancel or quit. We'll create that as well. Let me throw that out there. Yes, slides will be out there. It's there, of course. All right. So now I want to connect. I've got that code. I've got stuff on the, uh, the window. I'll go back to my main menu. This time, under objects, there's that delegate section. And then I'll notice over on the right, I need to click the, the small icon with the circle and the arrow, the delegate button, and then just drag. There's our computer name field. should have an open circle. Just drag that circle into the field. Once it's connected, I should get a solid dot inside that circle. Same thing for the cancel and the rename. Again, those perform some sort of an action. So located in a different spot. Connect all of those. Test it out. Uh, I don't want to get too far and find out something I did 20 minutes ago doesn't work. So again, terminal. We know how to launch it. Got the path. So we should see 
Now, a little bit of information there on our window. It's asking for the new name. You can rename or cancel. Should be fully functional. But I'm still missing a bit. Still doesn't look quite, quite right. So, more stuff. I want to add that spinner. More what Apple likes to call that indeterminate circular process indicator. Uh, I'd hate to know what the Germans call it. Twice that long. Um, there's also the uh, sort of barber shop, just the bar thing that kind of scrolls back and forth. You can use that, whichever one seems uh, more appealing. But I want to configure it a little bit. If nothing's happening, I don't want the spinner just sitting there. So we can uncheck that box, display when stop. Um, also, if I click on the ruler, there's a couple different sizes, um, small or regular. There is no large for whatever reason. So we'll just put it at uh, regular. Small, I think, is a little bit too, too small. So we'll get that configured. I want to set a default button. So that's easy enough to do. I'll just click on the rename button. Key equivalent, click in there, just hit enter. Might also make sense to make the cancel button the default. Uh, ensure the user doesn't rename the computer unless they really want to. Um, I'm lazy, I prefer just to be able to type in the name, hit enter, off we go. So that's on there. I'd like to uh, dress up the background a little bit. So there's a couple images I want to include. I can get those thrown out there as well. All right, so those should be available. Um, again, if you want, you can grab your own images, uh, company logo, whatever it happens to be. Background. Um, when I create the background, I just want to make sure the image is larger than the uh, window of the application. So we'll get those uploaded. So yeah, I didn't highlight it, but yeah, I want to be on that assets folder. Just drag them below the app icon. They're just to the right. Once I've added them to the, my project, I should be able to add them to the, uh, the window that we have. Again, over towards the right, uh, I need to click on that. It's towards the bottom. Icon that kind of looks like a, a piece of film. And it might take a little bit of coaxing or a little bit of time for the uh, list of available uh, resources to refresh. Um, I can nudge it a bit if I type in the, uh, the filter box at the bottom, the name of one of those images. Uh, should help refresh the list. Drag them into the window. Uh, as you can expect, I might need to resize the... Uh, the one graphic, if it's too large, shrink it down, too small, make it a little larger. Uh, more importantly on the background, when I drag that in, uh, I need to make sure that goes to the back, easy enough. From the menu bar, editor, arrange, we'll send it to the back. want to dress it up a little bit more. 
uh, want to provide some feedback as the, uh, the recon is running. So I'm going to throw a text field in there. Uh, I want to grab the one that sort of indicates the scrolling text field. Uh, I don't know that I'll be scrolling any text, but maybe later on I'll be adding more <coughs> to it. So we'll throw that in there. I also want it to blend into the background. Again, optional, maybe you want it to be a uh, easily visible text field. But for my app, I want to get rid of the, uh, the border. So towards the top, the border type, I'm going to be a uh, sort of dotted border. That'll eliminate it. Uh, I don't want to draw the background. Again, I'd sort of like it to be transparent. Uh, let's also uncheck. I don't want to see that uh, vertical scroller. So we'll get rid of that as well. We need to do a little bit more work uh, within the scroll view that we added. Uh, if I drill down a little bit, it also has a, a text view attribute. So that I also need to tweak. The text view, again, I can choose how the text is aligned. I'll go ahead and align it to the left. Um, I'm going to uncheck editable. There's no reason the user needs to be typing anything in there. Um, unselect draws background. Again, we're looking for it to be transparent. And I don't want to worry about... Um, seeing any of those squiggly, this word is spelled wrong type of things. So let's disable both spelling options there under linguistics. All right, so we added a couple items. The field that provides some feedback when the recon Process is running. We've got our spinner. So I need to add a little bit more code, similar to what we did before, property. Spinner. Again, the spinner doesn't cause anything to happen. So it's not a function. Same thing with the, uh, the text field. Those will both be properties. Again, give it a name. Same format as before, missing value. Once we get the code in there, same process. I need to connect the code to the objects. Main menu, delegate. I'll see the new items under outlets. Just go ahead and drag those in. Connect them. Uh, again, the items that we previously done will notice. Computer name field, it shows what it's connected to. I get the, the solid dot. I want to update the function a little bit, a little bit more typing. So one of the things we did previously with a bash script was I checked to make sure a name was entered. So once I run the line, set new name to, let's make sure something was actually entered. So a little bit of code there. Uh, new name as string equal to basically nothing. It's going to bail. Uh, passes that. Spinner start animation. Hopefully self-explanatory. Starts the spinner. Um, adding a little bit of output redirection. The stuff from our recon I'm piping out to a text file that I can read. Um, and then that I can present on the GUI to give the uh, user an idea what's going on. A couple checks to see if Recon is actually running. Um, probably could have been a little bit smarter install, instead of calling that uh, output file recon.txt if I'd have named it something besides Recon, the name of the pro process, uh, would have made my checking if the process is running a little bit easier. I wouldn't have to also look for uh, the tail of that file. At any rate, 
Keep checking, is it running? Is it running? If it's running, let's update the text field. Once it's done, I'm going to add uh, updated into the text field. Everybody knows that it's completed. Stop the spinner. Throw up a message. Hey, we're done. Time for lunch. And quit. A little bit of cleanup then. Now that I've added everything into the uh, application, into the function that I want, I don't have any need for the uh, original bash code. So I'm just going to delete it. Doesn't hurt to leave it in there. But I just like to uh, clean it up. Build the app again. Give it a run. All right, so we should get something that looks uh, looks like what we were aiming at. Got our logo, got our graphic. Uh, it's asking for the name. There's the default button. I should be able to type in the computer name, hit enter, or click rename, run through the process. So out of curiosity, did anybody actually build the application? No. Moving too fast? Way too fast. All right. Um, let's look at our third goal. Uh, Application signature. I've got an application. I want to uh, make it available to other people. Currently, if I look at the, uh, the signature, uh, and I can do this through terminal, code sign, dash DV, uh, I'll get a little bit of information. And the thing that uh, may be most important Signature equals ad hoc. That's sort of like a self-signed certificate. I trust it, but I don't know that anybody else is going to trust it. So let's get it signed. Uh, this requires a paid developer account. If you have one, great company has one you have access to it great we can keep going but I need to get into uh, Xcode from the menu bar preferences accounts and then click the plus I want to add my developer account type in the uh, appropriate credentials we'll hit sign in once I do that the account should show up where at the moment it says no accounts. Should add my account in there. Back to the main project window. Click at the top level, computer rename, target, same thing my application I need to or want to. Enable development sign in. Once I do that, should show either myself or the company, whichever account I've just added. So easy enough. If I build the application again, let's go ahead and check the signature. Looks good. Has my name in there or maybe the company name. Perhaps more importantly, I chose Apple as the authority. So it should be trusted perhaps a little bit more than just self-signed. However, if I go to share that application, throw it out on GitHub, throw it wherever, somebody downloads it. You may have seen this before. 
application is signed by an unidentified developer. <sighs> but I signed it. Well, I didn't go through the proper process for making it available to others. If I go back to Xcode, up on the menu bar, I need to go through product, archive the product. It gives me my application. Click on export, easy enough. Going to export developer ID, signed application. Um, if you do have more than one account with an Xcode, that's okay. Just pick whichever the appropriate account is. Add it in there, does a little bit of churning away. There's my application. Export. Save it to a, I don't know, convenient location. I could save it with the project. Maybe I want to create a folder um, separate that contains all of my archived projects. Whichever uh, organizational strategy works the best. Easy enough, we can export it. There it is. I can find it. This is the application. Uh, I can zip up, do whatever, put it out on a share. Folks can uh, download it. When I open it up, they'll see the, hey, this has been downloaded from wherever. You want to open it rather than, hey, this is from an unidentified developer. A little bit nicer. All right. Um, let me save a little bit of typing, uh, throw the project itself out there. Excellent. So it should be there. Uh, computer rename underscore final dot zip. So that you should be able to open up an Xcode. should have all the changes that we've made. All right. So thank you. But since we moved so fast, extra time, let's do a little bit of extra credit. Do a little bit more work. Um, maybe I'll slow it down a bit. So I want to add an icon to my application. Um, the generic page with an A on it, not too impressive. We'll dress that up a little bit. I'd like the application to work properly. If maybe I just double click it in the finder, uh, maybe I don't want to have to launch it through terminal, or some other means. And then I also want maybe to uh, tweak, adjust the, uh, the application window a little bit. <coughs> First thing I want to do, uh, let's address the app icon. Uh, you may have noticed earlier when I added in those two uh, two images, there was that app icon, it's sort of a placeholder. Uh, if I click on it, all sorts of different resolutions for the app icon. The finder, we have all sorts of different views. I want to make sure I can cover all of those. 16 point up to 512. We've got 1x, 2x for retina versus non-retina displays. So let's get an icon or several icons, different sizes, that we can throw in there. Um, I'm just going to take the hello image that we used earlier, modify that, use that for my icon. We could go out, maybe create some other custom icon. We'll try to keep it simple. 
So I made a copy of the icon, called it Hello Icon, opened it in preview. Um, since it wasn't square to begin with, I'm going to need to click the, uh, the padlock so I can adjust the uh, proportions. And I want to make sure that it's square. I'm going to start out at 512 by 512. Uh, as I resize it, scales down a lot better than it would scale up. Change the size, OK, save it. And we're done with one. And I just need to do 256, 128, 64, all the other sizes. More work than I want to do manually. So let's script it. So I've got a bash script. It's too bad I don't know somebody that could make an application out of that. <laughs> um, I think I just did see uh, Rich, Rich Troughton, probably everybody knows, has uh, an app for creating icons, an actual app. Rich is right there, all right. There we go. There we go. Uh, All right, so the script should be out there. Um, Basically, I run the script. Uh, if we just look through what it's doing, the image, that dollar sign one. So I run the script, point it at the, um, the image that I want to use for my icons. Gets names, da 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 da, do whatever. Loops through, creates all the different sizes. And the last line creates that icon set. So easy enough to run. Um, I'm not sure if I remember if I made the script executable, but we can quickly just either uh, chmod it or just bin bash path to the script. I'm just running it out of downloads. Uh, I don't need to run it as a uh, root or anything. In fact, it's probably better if I don't. Make sure I don't have any permission issues. Um, and then path to the image I want to use to create all the icons. All right, so we're good there. Should find on the desktop then a folder containing all the different sizes. Now it's just a matter of 16 by 16. Put that in the uh, the 1x 16 point. There's the 16 by 16 at 2x. Likewise in the 16 2x. So just a little bit of dragging and dropping, I can get all the icon sizes in their appropriate locations. Once that's done, again, rebuild the application. Command B, let's locate it in the finder. Should look a little nicer. Again, I can play around with the different views. The icon should scale well. Looks good between the two views there. All right, so we've knocked out another task.
So now a little bit more work on the, uh, the code. Um, I can run it from the finder. The, uh, I don't know if I call it an issue, more of an annoyance. When I run it, I put in the computer name, hit uh, rename, and then as soon as it hits that first set computer name, it's going to prompt for admin credentials. That's okay. It needs to run as root, elevated privileges. Uh, but then it hits the second local host name, prompts for credentials. Third one, prompts for credentials. So I'm tired of this, cancel. I'd like it to only ask once. So let's change things around a little bit. Updated, not adding a whole lot. To start with, I'm going to move the spinner rather than before the do shell script to after the do shell script. And the reason I do that is, honestly, I was lazy. And I didn't want to add code to check to see if they canceled when it prompted for admin credentials. So moving it was my easy, my lazy solution. At the end of that do shell script, I'm going to say with administrator privileges. So that's going to prompt me for some admin credentials. I'm also going to change. Uh, I had some issues once I added the administrator privileges to that do shell script. It didn't like me doing the, the witch jamp. So I ended up having to hard code where the jamp binary is located. Or if you're using another MDM where that particular binary is located. So we've made our changes. If I give it a run now, it should only prompt me once. Enter the name, administrative user, administrator password, and OK. It's going to run through, change the computer name, <coughs> provide some feedback as well. So we're good there. Last thing I want to do is maybe change the, uh, the main window a little bit. Let me just take a quick look and see why. So there it is. So the problem is, you can do all sorts of things with the window. And I guarantee people are going to do that. Launch it. Huh, look at that. And also because I might be dealing with uh, folks that are more adapt to Windows, is that close button they think quits the application. But oftentimes on the Mac side, the window disappears, but the application is still running. So I want to take care of <coughs> those two cases. So easy enough to do. Back to our main menu. Uh, I want to click on the window there in that uh, second column. And then all the way to the right, um, looks like I also changed the window title rather than having uh, rename computer lumped as all one word. Let's make it look a little bit nicer, a little more proper, perhaps. So we'll change that. Uh, the close, 
button. I can easily take care of that. Just uncheck it. It's no longer available. In order to close the window, they actually have to command Q or file. Quit the app. And then easy enough so that they don't resize the window. Again, just uncheck that as well. Once that's done, uh, we can build a rebuild the app again. And then if we take a quick look at it, So I no longer have the ability, if I'm down on the corner, to resize it. Can't close it. So Command-Q, hopefully they know that, or File Quit. And again, the title looks a little bit nicer. Just to make sure it works. Let's go ahead and test it out. Perfect. Asking for credentials. That's me. Make sure it's not plain text. All right. No. Must be that one. So there it goes. Again, I'm getting a little bit of feedback as it runs. Spinner spinning. And spinning. And spinning. How hard would it be for the nerves to get to where you want to get it? Depends on. Um, your Apple scripting abilities shouldn't be too difficult to yeah check is the name 14 characters or less does it contain uh, special characters that I don't want so right we could certainly add that as well rename complete all right so we're there so now, I think, we've reached the end. Um, questions? We do have ample time, uh, if you do want. Uh, the files are there to download, build your own application. Maybe you have another Apple script. You can certainly do that. Um, so I'm maneuvering around all this, so I'm Yeah, let me. <laughs> So basically, uh, I'm a noob to all this. I'm a Windows guy transitioning into a Mac position, and I'm about three months in on that with two years of IT experience. Uh, one of the thoughts I had, or thought that I might have heard you say earlier, is you got guys out in the field that you want to code this for because you don't want them to know admin credentials, etc. But in this example, you still have to apply admin credentials to rename the computer. Is that something that would be hard-coded in and compiled so it's secure if you were going to make one or is that not possible in this case for renaming an application so if i want to run it from the finder then yes i'll have to know admin credentials i could hard code them but i advise against that um, if you have a management solution uh, the script can be launched through say another application in jamf we have what we call self-service where they just click a button, it would launch the script with elevated privileges, so they don't get that prompt. Okay. Other questions? Yes. <laughs> the uh, do shell script part of it, if you have something more complicated than what we've got here, would you advise to have that as a separate file? Probably. There's, yeah, multiple ways, depending how uh, involved you want to get with Xcode. Uh, rather than an AppleScript application, we could use native Swift 
to, uh, to also um, run some bash commands and so forth. Yeah, there's lots of different ways, right? You can add a, the shell script as a separate file. Yeah. Uh, basically, which, whichever works the best, whatever you're more, most uh, comfortable with. Other questions? Back to the noob. <laughs> so um, suggestions on where to focus as far as scripting. If I want to get involved in this, you're saying there's multiple languages. So what is your preference as far as Xcode or Swift? Um, I'm hearing some other things at the conference that I'm going to definitely do a lot of research on. Python, right. But yes. what's hot and where do you feel like it's going and what's outdated? Don't really focus on as far as language. Um. So I like Bash, um, maybe because it's uh, a nice transition. I used to do a lot of Windows programming. Uh, it was easier to pick up than diving into, say, Swift. Uh, I like to say uh, programming is not my job, and as long as it's not my job, I like to do it. Uh, <laughs> but the more I do with Swift, the more it seems to become my job. It's uh, a higher level language, fairly steep learning curve. Uh, Bash, AppleScript, Python, I think are a lot easier to start out with. Um, yeah. Pass the cube. Do you have any uh, links or resources for, you know, because this is a pretty simple application, right. um, to basically build a little bit more complex other than having to learn, you know, if I went and learned all of Xcode, I'd go to school for sure. the next six months on how to do it or something? Um, I can't think of really anything current. AppleScript has been around a long time. Um, yeah, I don't really have a, uh, a good resource for that. Um, as far as Swift goes, um, I can add those to the slide. Yeah. Ray, uh, uh, Rend Venderwich, I'll add it to the slides, but uh, has a lot of good uh, uh, Xcode samples. Okay. Any more? Yeah, can we? Oh, we're in the room. had to deflect without it hitting your head, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is super basic. Can you go back to where you even linked the buttons, please? I think that's where I got super lost. Gotcha. gotcha. Thanks. Yeah, all the way at the front. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, we've got the code, we've got the graphics. So the second column from the very left looks different for me. And I'm okay. wondering how to expand that. And also the far most right column. So it probably... Mm. Looks like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we can just expand. Sorry, uh, sorry, I guess. Yeah, drag <laughs> it over. Yeah, cool. Um, and then as far as doing the dragging to link them, that's yeah. So yeah, I'll need to oftentimes click on the window so that it's easily viewable, and then. All the way to the left, I need to make sure connections inspector. Mm, okay. So yeah, that should get us in a, a place where we can either inspect the connections or 
or create them. Okay, so we we create the connections directly from that that window. Correct. Uh, okay, cool. Correct. So Thank yeah, you. then I can just drag. It's already connected, but yeah, drag okay. it whatever I want to connect it to. Perfect. Thank you. Quite all right. Other questions. Oop, right behind you. Oh, cool. Just a request. Um, I don't think you uploaded your tweaked version of Final. Did you? Did you do that for us? The project itself. The the last version that you, that you did. Thank you. Quite all right. Quite all right. Final underscore. Uh, we'll say EC for extra credit. Uh, oh, you put your computer away. Uh, it should be there. It is. Momentarily. Uh, any other questions? Have a few minutes. Yeah, can we uh, throw the box? Or who wanted it? Here we go. Easier said than done. <laughs> Once it's compiled as an app, is it possible for someone to reverse engineer your? So I'm going to say yes, but that's beyond anything that I'm capable of. Um, I mean, you can uh, use just like the uh, there's a strings command that can show you any text in the application, but... Um, I'm more thinking if someone in IT would be able to screw it up or mess it up or something like that, you know. Uh, Once it's compiled. Pretty safe. Yeah, I mean, that, that they would have to... Really know what they're doing. Compile it and then build <laughs> I got it again. you. Yeah. They'd have to sign it themselves. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I wanted. Thanks. Right. Um, it's probably not something you can just demonstrate right now, but I was curious... Um, in a similar kind of application, how hard or possible is it to have something where like maybe the user selects a file and you either do something based on its path or the contents of the file? Like, I know you can like have a file picker you can add, but I like, I'm not sure how, you know, or are there instructions out there that we could follow afterwards to try that? So yeah, I've got other applications, yeah, where you just drag in a file um, yeah, and then reads the file path it does something with that file, so uh, yeah, not a quick. Yeah. Put it on, but uh, you can ping me. Okay. Uh, I can probably send some information. Great. Um, <coughs> Semi-related, what I found today, uh, the previous course, uh, everyone can code. If you go on to the community notes and look at uh, the notes that were taken for that class, uh, there were some Apple iBooks that were mentioned. Uh, for app development, for Xcode, that might be helpful. Um, I plan on checking them out. So just a note if you didn't go to that class. Correct. Yeah, Apple has a whole series uh, of iBooks that you can download uh, for Swift. Um, won't do much with the, the Apple script type stuff, but yeah, great resource. Oh, was I incorrect? I thought it was, so it was for Swift and so not for Xcode. For, yeah, Swift is within Xcode. See, still learning. So still learning. I didn't know that. Right. So Xcode, I can do Apple Script, Swift. I can probably put Python in there. So it's just another language to, uh, to utilize. Um, any other questions? All right. Well, thank you again. Feedback. <laughs> <laughs>